Welcome back. You're still watching Business Morning. Uh, the World Bank estimates Nigeria's housing deficit to be 17 million as of 2019, and this figure is increasing yearly by about 20 percent. Nigeria's housing, about uh, 21 a trillion naira, will be required to finance the deficit, and this need is also an opportunity for private sector to create businesses and consequently provide jobs for the teeming youths in the country. But investors cashing in on the opportunity to reduce unemployment while reducing the housing deficit. Uh, one of such investors is Dr. Stephen Akintayo, Chief Executive Officer of GTEx uh, Global. He's joining us now to weigh in on this conversation. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good, Good, morning. Good morning. Good morning. So this uh, 17 million deficit, it's, uh, it's quite a massive yeah. uh, gap. Um, what are the consequences of having this uh, sort of deficit? Well, it's, um, it leads to an increase in price of properties, so too expensive to, to rent property in Nigeria, particularly Lagos, and um, it's a bit expensive to acquire. If people don't know that the most expensive land in the world exists in Lagos, hmm. called Banana Island. It's the only place you need up to $2 million to get 600 square meters. It would have been New York, but they don't have land in New York. They sell floors. And so um, that can change, but it's good because for business, it means there are a lot of opportunities. Uh, people can come in and start a business and, and employ people. And the largest employer of labor anywhere in the world is real estate um, you, because tourism is part of real estate, agriculture is still real estate, and several sectors like that stay on that real estate. But, but why is the private sector not taking advantage of this uh, you know, gap? Well, it's, it's, the, it's the partnership that needs to happen between the government and the commercial banks, right? So um, a lot of times we have investors in diaspora and Nigerians in diaspora say, I want to buy property in Nigeria, but it's too expensive. And I was like, no, it's not. Because a, a three-bedroom in Houston, for example, probably costs two, 250000 US dollars. But you just need to deposit $20,000. And you have your property, you move, you pay like 30 years, and you don't need a mortgage bank in the U.S. or in the U.K. to own a property. Mm -hmm. So if the commercial banks and the, you know, and the government can work together and make sure that we, the developer, our job is to build the house and get our money and move out, right? But you, the banks, the government can say, hey, we will pay you, the developer, once you have somebody who has paid 20%, who has paid 15%. Uh, that's what happens in other, develop, in other developed world, and that's why you're having people moving, because I can, in, 30, in, in 90 days, you know, have my capital back, build more, and then, like that, the circle continues. So, so you are a real estate investor. When we're talking yeah. of uh, needing 21 trillion naira, you yeah. know, to, to close this gap, yeah. we expect people like you to <laughs> put in that money. What are you waiting for? You, you know, the reality is that I also require that people invest with me, right? And, you know, security is a major issue um, before they will invest. Um, you also have the, the issue of a sea of war. I've said it over and over again. One of the biggest injustices in Nigeria is to say a governor is the owner of the land. It doesn't make any sense anywhere in the world, right? Because indigenous people own the land anywhere. Mm -hmm. So when you create that system to say, once you are the governor, you own the land, mm -hmm. and then it's you that needs to give C of O. That creates so much problem. So right now, even many parts of Nigeria, the land is there. I mean, we're talking about Sambisa Forest insecurity. The land is there. We should be building skyscrapers in... I mean, Dubai is sand and water. It's forest, literally, right? I mean, desert rather, not even forest. It's desert. desert. And what exists in Sambisa is what Dubai is. It's just desert and water. So the issue here is security. Yes, yeah, security one. But even the government not giving people the sea of O to make them take over. Right? I've said it, with, you know, it's funny, but give me sea of war or Sambisa, I will be skyscrapers. <laughs> what about the security? How much of that can you handle? Oh, trust me, technology can do that. You know, I, I mean, technology, a lot of smart, we underrate Nigerian youth. Too, right? A Nigerian youth can come up with a mobile app that will help you to detect user artificial intelligence where kidnappers are, where it, I mean, these things are done all over the world, and our user can do it. You just need to open the system up, 
right, mm. so that they can come in. When, and when do you say the open the system up, I mean, what do you mean? What, what should Creating be done, or what should the youth do? Yeah. So I give us. Uh, uh, I was born in Meduguri, so I, I, I visited 2019 to do some donation in one of the IDP camps, and um, you know, a place that I was supposed to take. So 2,000, 3,000 people, you have 35,000 people there, right? And I said, when I went to the school, they had to be doing, you know, sessions, like four hours, you know, per class because they don't have enough classroom. I said, you know what? I want to come in and build, you know, classes. Mm. Nobody needs to pay me. It's my donation. I was born here. Mm -hmm. And you will not believe it. I'm still here to get response. I had to almost try to even be lobbying somebody to help me meet the governor, hopefully, to use my money to build classrooms in a place. That's what we are saying about opening up. Mm. An so example. the bureaucracy <laughs> and yeah. politicking. Yeah. yeah. So what are the, uh, some of the platforms and avenues in the property business to, you know, mop up this unemployment uh, Especially when we talk about the ICT. Right you talked about mm -hmm. the ICT. Yeah. Mm. So one of the beautiful things that we are doing is to use the brokerage angle. Mm. Uh, our company also exists in Dubai, US, and UK. We're a registered company and we have offices there. And one of the things you look at the Dubai economy, a lot of people have been able to have jobs, own their business through brokerage. And being a property broker, you don't need money. All you're doing is to connect with a credible developer and begin to market their properties using the internet. Um, because one of the things that COVID did was that people were now open to do a core virtual tour. So just show me the property virtually, and I'm interested in, in paying for it. And, and that has opened up a lot of opportunity for young people. Most investors in Nigeria are Nigerians in diaspora. Right, it react, that's, I mean, you are looking at some years, some year was $5 billion. I think last year, probably more than that, that came in uh, from Nigeria and diaspora to Nigeria. And many of them are using this to invest in properties. So if you can get young people, uh, and that's what we're doing, train them. How do you use the internet? How do you package yourself? Because if you're going to sell me a property of $100 million, you have to look $100 million, <laughs> You know? <laughs> so these are all things we're saying. But others, we need to come in uh, and begin to say, okay, how can young people come into some of these sectors without money? Mm. There are areas you can come in without, and you know, we still cash. have the issue of quack. Realtors. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because yeah. now that it's even going virtual, exactly. we have to be extra careful. And, Anybody and, just wake up and, and say, I'm and, a real estate agent. Exactly. That usually is about greed. You know, I see how somebody chatted me of this morning. I said, I want somewhere in Ibejileki. Uh, it must be two million naira. It must have C of O. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> get real. You know, get real. Like, okay, it doesn't work that. So what, part of the training is to say, it's not about cheap. You know, it's about quality. It's about being sure mm. that the, the property is genuine and people uh, can have. Because you're building your name. A good name is better than silver and uh -huh. gold. Mm. People have to be sure that you, the broker, through you, I bought a property and that thing is real. And these are part of what you're talking about at your conference. Tell exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So one of the things we've done is to say, can we bring the best in the world? Right, to, to inspire. Because someone was sh sharing with me this. I said, when last did you hear any good news about Nigeria? I said, well, this is the good news. <laughs> okay? <laughs> this is the good news. Yeah. Right? That we need to... And I, I really want to appeal to the private sector. We just have to step in. Right? You know, if all of us are playing this, is government without government, we just have to step in. In our little space. Right? The event is going to be hosting 12,000 people that are going to be trained by Ryan Sahant is the number one property broker in the world. Uh, he's, he does over a billion dollars in property brokerage every year. He's based in New York. He's going to be speaking at the conference. We have um, Grant Cardone. He's done over $2.5 billion in real estate. We have Dr. John Maxwell. All of you should know John yes. Maxwell, no. uh, who is also going to be speaking about leadership. Because sometimes what is the problem we see in Nigeria is that nobody just wants to own up a sector. And it's one of the things I decided that we have to do. For me, give me the headache of real estate in Nigeria. I'm taking that one, right? I have given myself tied to, and, you know. But we have to own up because leadership starts by leading yourself and just taking responsibility. Today, you meet a governor, he's not owning up for a state. A senator is not owning up. A president is not owning up. We just have to start owning up. 
this is my space, and I'm going to take care of it. That's, that's one of the reasons why we say Dr. John Maxwell, he's not into real estate, but he needs to speak to that you know, leadership thing. Because if you're saying people should become brokers, they should invest, what's my own? How do we do it in this country when everything is not working? When own it. Mm -hmm. You were born for such a time as Passes. this. How can people attend this conference? So, um, um, it's, it's one, of, one of the things we've done is to make it virtual, I mean, hybrid, mm -hmm. so you can attend virtually. We're we'll hosting over 10,000 people will be watching virtually online, and then you can attend physically. Um, in Lagos, Nigeria, at um, Landmark Event Center, Oniru, Lagos, and then when in is Dubai. It? Yeah, May 1st. May 1st. Uh, May 1st, starting 10 a.m. And for those in Dubai, it's starting because uh, uh, we're also hosting it live in Dubai. Mm -hmm. So for Dubai, it's 1, um, 1 p.m. Dubai time, 10 a.m. Uh, Nigerian time, Landmark Event Center. So physically, people can so come. So who, who can right come? There. Well, if you want to make something on the side, you can come, mm. right? Because the concept of brokerage is a referral business, right? You know, I could be anybody and just, can I first of all identify a legitimate real estate company or, or business? Can I just refer? The company would take care of showing the person the property, handling, so you're just doing referral. And usually, one of the things GTS has committed to do, our company, is to say, we will be uh, uh, creating 100,000 jobs through this brokerage program in the next five years. We currently have over 5,000 mm -hmm. who have been empowered through this. And we're hoping this conference will empower another 12,000. Uh, and we already have people making money because we committed 15% of every single property we sell to the broker. Right, uh, and that is opening up the space. I mean, if we can provide 100,000 jobs in the next five years, that's how we can start mopping up this unemployment, you know, youths are not big. Look at, we keep shouting security. But you go to a place, you, you know, you bring military, you dislodge them, like in the case of the IDP I saw, what job were those young 35,000 people in a place doing? There was no job. So there, there is a place where we, to the private sector, need to come in. How do we begin to empower people? You know, how do we, you know, rehabilitate that? How do we put, government can't do all. We have to also come in, and plus it's our country. Plus you don't have a business if the country disappears. Don't have a place to live. You don't yes. have a place to live. So for those who would come to this conference, yeah. they expect to go back with the anticipation that they could be in business. Do exactly. you have a requirement? Must they be graduate? Must they be a certain age? Mm. Or is mm. just anybody come as you are? B beautiful. Um, of course you have to be 18 and above. Mm. Uh, you don't need to be a graduate, but you need to be trained. The truth is that anybody reigning in life are trained. Uh, you can't go far in life if you are not really skilled. And, and we have overemphasized this form of education. We forget that one of the richest men in this country, you know, his cousin was Maduka, who, did he, who has uh, started at five or what. Mm. So it's not about the formal university masters, but you still have to be trained on understand what so is property. Them. Yeah, that's what we're doing at okay. the conference, mm. right? And you still have to be, because knowledge is not a destination, it's a journey. Yeah. So it's a, it's a process and you have to keep uh, going through that. But, but people are open, it's not, there's no uh, gender restriction, there's no educational restriction, but you have to be hungry. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, um, hopefully we, we have an invite. Yes, I believe no, no, so. VIP for the two of you. Fantastic. So. VIP, fantastic. Thank All you right. so much. Thank uh, you Dr. for having Stephen me. Dr. Stephen Akintayo, the CEO of GTEx Global, and thank you for inviting us to your conference on yes. the 1st yes. of May. VIP, don't yeah, forget. Yeah, VIP. VIP, 10 a.m. All right, okay. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, so much. Thank you for Enjoy having the rest me. Of day. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll take a break now. When we come back, commodities market update is next.